If you're planning a trip to Iceland, it is so important to have waterproof gear from head to toe. Iceland is a country that is known for rainy weather. And so in order to stay dry and warm, here are my five recommendations for waterproof gear for your trip to Iceland. Hey, my name is Jeannie and I've spent the past eight years traveling all around Iceland and gathering the best tips and gems so that you can have the best trip ever. Let's get into it. All right, the first thing that you need is a waterproof top slash jacket. Now, I have two different options here because on my packing list, I recommend two different options. People always ask me why and if it's really necessary. So I'm gonna go over the difference in this video. First up, this is going to be a nice water resistant layer. This is a waterproof jacket, right? This is a rain jacket. So if you don't, if you can't really tell, this is like, I don't really even know the material, but it's like a rain jacket. It's plasticky. The water and the rain will completely roll off of here. This is what I mean by a rain jacket. When I recommend rain gear, I'm usually referring to something that does not absorb any water. If you are using this kind of coat, like the red, it is a bit of a porous material. And so the difference between this is it's going to absorb a little bit of moisture, but in general, keep you a bit waterproof. I know that I can wear this on a day where it's misting rain. This has enough waterproof protection for me to stay dry on just your average outing, maybe sightseeing, um, heading towards like Skogafoss, um, going on a hike, I know that I will stay wind and waterproof with this. The difference in bringing a rain jacket, this I would use when it is heavier raining. It's raining outside, it's not just a light misty drizzle. Also, I will use this if I'm going to walk behind a waterfall. If you're going to places like Cellulans Foss or walking towards, you know, getting pretty close to Skoga Foss, then you're going to want to wear a rain jacket, waterproof 100%. A lot of times when you buy rain gear or outdoor gear in general, it will list the amount of millimeters of water that it can withstand. So I don't know what this one is rated in anymore. This is a very, I got this a long time ago. What you want to do is check when you're buying your outerwear or bringing your outerwear, you want to check how waterproof it is. The other thing that you want to know is that the seams are waterproof because a lot of times that's where the jacket is vulnerable is where it's sewn together. So you don't want to be risking that. Okay. Another thing that I'll say is a lot of times with the rain gear, like waterproof, I recommend frog togs. So this is a very inexpensive combination. I'll, I'll link it in the description below. Frog togs is basically an oversized top and bottom layer that you can throw on top of anything. So you could even throw it on top of your jacket. If you don't feel like buying a 100% rain jacket or you don't wanna bring it or you don't feel like carrying it around or whatever, um, frog togs are very lightweight, very packable, like it can squish down really, really small. And then a lot of times you can just pull that over. Like even if you're wearing bulky pants or something, then you can put that on over knee. It's not uh, flattering usually, but it's super practical. Frog tog, 100% waterproof, rolling off. All right, sticking with the jacket theme, this is a long topic. A couple of things that I will recommend for a jacket. Number one, a hood. Absolute must have, your jacket has to have a hood because even if it isn't raining when you go outside, it will usually start raining. <laughs> So um, there's so many times where I'm only wearing a headband, but then it will start raining and I just throw up my hood and now I'm a little bit more warm and protected from the rain. All right, that is your rain jacket situation. Moving on to the lower half of our body. So waterproof pants. Again, this is going to be up to personal preference if you wanna buy something or you already have something at your house to bring with you. These are just hiking pants. These are not 100% waterproof. It's similar with the red jacket situation is that these can withstand a certain amount of water, but I wouldn't say they were 100% waterproof. However, these are my go-to pants when I'm out and about exploring, hiking, or anything like that. Very straightforward. This is a basic pair from REI, but I will link a similar pair in the description below in case you wanna check those out. Waterproof seam is important. These don't have any lining for warmth, so this is strictly like a spring, summer, autumn pant. 
Um, if you're coming in winter, I still would recommend waterproof, but you want something warmer. I will say with pants, and similar to the red pink coat situation, is if you are wearing rain pants, it's probably not something that you're gonna wanna wear all day long, compared to something like this, which is a hiking pant, which has you know some breathability in it. And that's nice because it's going to allow the flow of air exchange rather than just trapping all of your air in and you can start to feel really kind of warm unnecessarily instead of just rain gear from head to toe all day long then this is nice to have super important for your legs speaking of packing if you're coming to iceland i've already made a complete packing list for you that you can just grab download for free and take with you as you're packing so that you can check off item by item when you're looking at the digital version as well i link to all of my recommended gear in my amazon storefront so that you can quickly grab any items that you don't have i will put that link in the description below Hello, and with that, let's get back to the video. The next thing you're gonna need are waterproof footwear. You guessed it. So a couple of options for this one. I would say the most common is going to be hiking boots, simply because this is the most versatile pair of footwear that you're gonna use all around Iceland. So when it comes to a boot, I am not a shoe expert or a Zappos model, but I will do my best. <laughs> this hiking boot is almost 100% waterproof, although if I were to step in a stream of water, I don't think that it would hold up. So it's not like a rain boot, but you know, hiking boots are generally waterproof. Ish. Again, I'm not walking through water, so I don't need that level of protection, but a hiking boot will do you just fine for your general sightseeing around Iceland. Couple of things to consider. This does go up a bit higher on my ankle. I like that kind of support for doing a lot of longer walks. So for hiking to Reykjadal or Hengafoss or something like that, I like a hiking boot, but my personal preference is usually a hiking shoe and that just means it cuts off right here. Totally personal preference or whatever you have at home Sometimes people don't wanna buy a bunch of gear for Iceland and that's totally fine. But just so you know, the difference between the hiking boot and the hiking shoe, they'll look very similar, have the similar components. Make sure that it is somewhat waterproof. Lots and lots of rainy, wet situations. As always with footwear, you wanna have a nice grippy outsole so that you can grip onto the rocks or the slippery you know, surfaces that are around the waterfalls. So having that is really good. I guess in comparison to bringing rain boots, it would be the same thing that I was just talking about with the pants. I don't think I would want to wear rain boots in Iceland just because they don't have any support. So they're not like, you know, really solid to your foot and usually don't have as good of like grip on the bottom. So if you want to bring rain boots and you have room in your luggage, I can see an argument where you would use both. I will say you don't need hiking boots, but I would definitely never, never, never recommend like tennis shoes in Iceland. They're not protective enough on your foot. At the bare minimum, what you can do is you can spray waterproof if one of your boots is not 100% waterproof. But those are my go-to footwear in Iceland. The next waterproof item that you're gonna wanna have is a backpack. So when you're out and about all day long, in and out of the car, carrying your camera gear, carrying your snacks, carrying your extra hat, whatever it is, you are gonna have probably a gear pack of some sort. Especially if, like I said, you're going on a hike, say you're hiking up to Reiki Dollar and you wanna bring your swimsuit with you, then you need a backpack. So you don't want the what's inside your backpack to get wet. This is not waterproof, <laughs> I will say that but it is water resistant. Are we seeing a theme here? I'm sure there are waterproof backpacks out there. I don't have one, but what I do have is this handy waterproof cover that goes over my backpack. So let me show you, this is a very inexpensive hack. Again, I'll link to all of this in the description box below. It packs up in this convenient little pack. Take it out of the bag and wrap it around your backpack. So convenient. I love it. So this is 100% waterproof. This would be that raincoat material. This is very packable. You saw how small it got. So I just throw it in side of my backpack so that when I'm walking around, if it starts to pour out of the middle of nowhere and we're like in a hike and everything like that, then I can just whip it out, put it on my backpack and we are good to go. All right, moving on to the accessories. Yes, as waterproof accessories as you can, more waterproof the better, head to toe, like I said. But a big one here are the gloves. 
I see a lot of people that are wearing just like some really lightweight knit gloves. That's not really gonna cut it for wind or rain in Iceland. These ones have a nice waterproof protection. Again, I'm sure you could get like a fabric, like a waterproof fabric spray that you can put on top of your gloves and that would really help. I wouldn't say there's one particular pair of gloves that I recommend, but I will provide a link just for reference. Worst case scenario is always pack two. So two um, pair of gloves and two hats because I mean, generally waterproof hats don't exist, right? So I always bring two of everything when we're traveling just in case it gets wet. Alrighty, my friends, those are my recommendations for the waterproof gear that you need. And speaking of rain, if you find yourself in Reykjavik and you're stuck inside on a rainy day, watch this video for more suggestions on fun things to do. I'll see you guys in the next video, but until then, happy planning.